Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your agriculture update for this Monday. And today is August 28th, 2017, just after 1.50 p.m. That's 5.00 p.m. Central Daylight Time. If you take a look in the grain market, all were lower. Now, a lot of questions have been asked about the impact of Hurricane Harvey and what it's going to do to these markets. Well, in a regional basis, okay, they probably have a certain amount of damage, but this isn't a big area for corn, soybeans, or wheat necessarily. It is where Hurricane Harvey is, an important area for cotton, and we'll see just how much of that crop did get hurt. Now, if you move into Texas further north from where it's at, or west, away from where Harvey is, well, most of that cotton had already been harvested. It's the late planted cotton that the big question is, and even though a lot of it had been moved into storage and near the gins. With this much rain, you'd never know if the water gets in there, and if it does, the damage, and that would affect the quality. So something to be concerned there. Sugar market got a nice bid today. You would expect the crude to be weaker initially, and the reason is so many of the refineries, four very large ones, got shut in. Shut in means that they shut them down, getting them ready for the weather damage, whatever's going to happen, and then they start up. Now, I just heard that in uh, Corpus Christi, they're going to start up another refinery, ideally on Wednesday. So they're starting to come back, one of them. I don't know about the other three at this point. But what that does is when they're shut in, they don't buy the crude. They sit back, they, there's no need for it, but the gasoline's in short demand because you've got to still have the gasoline demand. It keeps going in other parts of the country, so that gets a bid. All this is temporary. What none of us know is how temporary because we don't have damage reports in hand yet. When I take a look at the soybeans on a weekly chart, and let's understand where we're at. We're just about to head into September. The crop size is pretty much made. Now the question is, how big is it? Where is it? Things of that nature is, as the harvest begins. Still a little early there, though. You can see you've gone from 1027 and three quarters on a weekly chart to 917 and a quarter, and now you're only 18 cents away, having lost today three and three quarter cents uh, for Monday, the beginning of the week. When we take a look at a daily area chart of closes, the trend in this market I still think is up from 924 to the high point that we hit right here, which was 946 and a half. Now, one of the things I'm looking at is you see when the market hooked right here, that close is 938. Get under that, and I think the market's going to have a problem, and I think you lose the upthrust, but it's got to close under that. We'll see if the market's capable of it and if this was the rally, or do you pop back through this high and start something to the upside? The market tried that today, and you can see it. Today's high was 9.50 and a half. By the end of the day, you had what's called an outside day down. What does that mean? It means you took out the high and low of Friday, closed lower on the day, and even under the day's opening, outside day down. What don't I want to see as a technician? I don't want to see today's high taken out. If it is, this could be labeled a bear trap and the market might want to work a bit higher. Don't take that out. Where might this market head? Well, first thing we do is put on the swing line to get an idea. The pattern is not one of a trend. You have a higher high and a lower low. So that's the first thing I look at. I next look to see where the 18-day average of closes is and the 100. The 100 is up here at 59 and three quarters. The 18 is 45 and a half, roughly. If you were to take out this 50 and a half, you might make a run towards the 100, but you didn't do that. Now, until you take that out, where might the market head? One possibility might be the lower Bollinger Band at 916 and a quarter. Why? Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading with them in them. Often markets that surge to the upside or downside get stymied at first in hitting these numbers. It's not uncommon. 
Yes, you can hit it and keep going. That happens. But more times than not, if you go back on your chart, and that's what you should do, is you shouldn't believe me on everything, that's for sure. Uh, take a look at all this, and you'll see yourself that more times than not, it's a good reference point. So as a reference point, if the market continue breaking down, if today's crop reports that come out after the close, the conditions come in about as expected and things look okay, that's a possibility. It's still 25 cents away. That's not an easy number. When I take a look at where the market's at, it is oversold. So getting short down here is not easy. Oversold condition, not trending. The bias is down because you're under the 18-week average, but you could set up a trap and get a pop towards 959 plus if you get over today's high. In the meal market, the meal's still trying to drop down and it did maintain its bearish embedded reading. Now, if we go to Friday, you can see how the market closed 1897. Most of the day today was spent losing that reading. You were trading over 20, probably better than two thirds of the day. I was looking at it. So it was at least the times I was looking at it. Then I noticed it got hit late in the day. Okay, we're in an important zone. If this market's going to let go, it's got to be about now, I think. Otherwise, you can lose that embedded reading. So I'm looking for immediate decline. Here's what bothers me in the grains. You're down today. We get a, a statement called Tuesday reversals. Now, they don't always occur, but you look for them. And if the market's going to reverse, tomorrow happens to be Tuesday. Wouldn't surprise me to try to get through these lows and see if the market can grab any traction. In the soybean oil market, you're very overbought. This has been the strength in the bean complex. A lot of it has to do with the biodiesel laws that might go into effect in November, and they're going to be retroactive where duties are going to be, have to be paid on any oil coming in from Argentina or Indonesia due to the fact that the Trump administration believes that they're dumping soybean oil on our market. In fact, in Argentina, I read that some of the uh, exporters aren't even sending their oil now. They don't want to be bothered with the tariff that's coming. So you've got the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. You're in an uptrend unless you take out 34.77. If that occurs, it's possible you might want to drop back to that 18-day average of closes. In the corn market, the trend is still one that is violent to the downside. Violent being, this market was in the 410 plus. We're now at the 350 level. The lower Bollinger Bands, 346 and three quarters. The market's not falling apart by any stretch. In other words, five, 10 cents a day. It's begrudgingly two, three cents a day at this point. In the wheat market, I know traders came in because I I'd put out some very bearish comments over the weekend. And uh, the first thing that happened is IRA. You do realize this is a market over 480 and you're now talking this market down here and you're still talking bearish a buck 50 lower. I couldn't agree more. That is a good comment. But you have the embedded reading. You're under the 18-day average. Until the trend isn't, is over, it isn't over. And I, I gave up years ago trying to figure out how high or how low that means. And the reason is I once saw potatoes go basically 23 days in a row limit down. You wouldn't believe it. This was early in my career. I saw onions that were traded once as futures where the bag was worth more money than the onion. So I learned a long time ago, you can get to extremes and what you don't want to put is your logic into the equation. You want to let the chart do the talking. Certainly a warning side would be taking out Friday's high of 438, but until that occurs, market's got a lot of people caught. Everybody over this price is wrong. Who's under the gun? The bulls or the bears? <laughs> the bulls. The bears have control of the market. That's the point that I'm making. In the sugar market, went right on up today. If you look at the upper Bollinger Band, it's 1443. You got to 1435. You're overbought in an uptrend, knocking on the door of resistance. In the coffee market, you have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You still have an embedded reading. The market tried today to do a better job and push through. It didn't. Let's assume it loses the embedded reading. In other words, the red line closes over 20. Then the resistance is the combination of 136.90 to 136.85, the 18 and the 100-day average of closes. Let's assume the embedded reading holds and the market starts down. 
one of the verifiers would be taking out today's low of 129.60 and that could put the market on board to even try to break through the most recent low. In the cocoa market, to my surprise, the market charged right up today through the 18 and the 100 day average of closes. Now normally that's better resistance than that. Did it overdo itself and is it going to pull back? I don't know. It has had past tense. Let's take today off the chart. You've had the pattern of higher lows and higher highs. So bearish isn't the key. Where did you go up to on Friday? You didn't quite hit the 18 day average. You were not embedded here. If you take a look or were you? Watch this. Let's get to this together. Both numbers were not under 20. Both under 20. This is last Wednesday. Both under 20 on Tuesday and on Monday. So when you lost the embedded reading, the idea is you're going to go to the 18-day average of closes. You went there on Friday. You poked further through today. Now, support becomes what was resistance back in these two numbers. We'll see how that does tomorrow. In the cotton market, the big question in cotton is this. Let me take you to Friday's action. You had a big failure in cotton, an outside day down. I told you, and I'm going to say it again, I was surprised because cotton is one of the crops that we don't know how much damage. The market acted like somebody knew something that the, the crop wasn't, in fact, damaged. Today, the market jumps right back up, goes from the 18-day average higher. If you take out the 70 level, you create what I call a bear trap in the market. That's because the people that went short that day, well, they're caught. Nobody's got any money left from that day, at least. And the next resistance would be the closest of a key moving average of the Bollinger Band. That would be 7085. It doesn't mean I'm going to be right on that theory, but that is my theory. Who's in control of the market right now? Nobody. You got a higher high and a lower low pattern. Take out this 70 level and you'll have higher lows, higher highs. That could be bullish. In the cattle market, we had a cattle on feed report on Friday, and now you've got a pattern of a lower low, a higher high. You tell me what the market did. Look at the 18-day average of closes, 108.37 and a half, and you closed right on it. The momentum has turned up in the market, but you're not trending. Don't know what I tell you to do there. In the feeder cattle market, when you saw the bull report on Friday, and this was after the close, of course, you had the pattern already of higher lows, higher highs, but you closed under the 18-day average, and you would hit that 18. That's still going to be resistance as of today, and if the market pokes through it, the next resistance level is the 100-day average. Market went right up, got to 147 and a quarter through that 100-day, but by the end of the day, came back and settled under it. Momentum. To the upside, trend up, higher lows, higher highs, bias up. Market still looks friendly here. In the hog market, this is a class market that just fell apart. It went from over 71 down now to 61, letting nobody out of the way. I hate when you get these patterns. They're vertical price drops. And what I do on charts when I see them, if you're not already in the trade, I walk away. Where are you going to put a risk? How do you put a stop on something like that? It can bounce up to just take you out because it's so crazy in there. So, dangerous chart. All right, I want to talk about our chart of the day. I know a lot of you have gotten it. There are no more emails of them coming out to you. The only way you can get them is if you're a subscriber to one of our two charting platforms. So it's all been rolled in. And I think you'll find that not getting these each day can be painful if you've gotten accustomed to them. So if you have our platform, terrific. Just go in there and look at our QT News. It'll be right there. If not, what you want to do is give my staff a call, get put on one of our charting platforms so you can get this news and the other news that we have. It's really a simple feature. How do you do it? Will you give us a phone call at 866-973-2077. You can go to our website, ask for a free trial of our trading platforms if you haven't had one before. If you have, you're not going to get it. you got to become a subscriber. You can click right up here for the free trial or underneath us. You can always click and it'll say underneath us on many websites. Click here for Iris free offers. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day. My heart goes out to everybody in Texas, of course. I can't believe how much rain's coming down there. And we're watching and our prayers are with you. Take care all.